Welcome back to Orcat X Capture Tutorial Series. In this video, we're going to cover how to open and view Live Bomb on a captured project, view its various UI elements, and use it to optimize and improve bomb health. To use Live Bomb and to make its menu active in Capture, the project should be present in the user's local workspace. This can be done either by creating a new project directly in the local workspace from the new project dialog with Use Workspace checkbox checked or if you have an existing project in your local disk you can open it in capture and add it to your local workspace by right clicking on the DSN file and clicking add to workspace once done the project will show up in the user's local workspace as we can see in the file manager If you're launching LiveBomb on a workspace project for the first time, then you'll need to save the design once before launching it. This is to generate or update the LiveBomb data so that it displays the real-time data from the cloud. All right, now we will save the design from the toolbar. Click Tools, LiveBomb to launch LiveBomb. This will open a new tab with the header LiveBomb and followed by the name of the design. In the Live Bomb tab, you will see a dashboard view which shows the overall summary of the design. In the top section of the tab, you will see the last saved or updated timestamp of the design. A drop down to switch between the base bomb view and variant views of the design, if any. Below it, we have the tiles section which displays the grouping count of components as per the tile's name. These tiles also act as filters in the part list view, which we will see later in the video. Here, the total tile indicates the total number of components placed in the schematic. Unmatched are the components which do not have an MPN or manufacturer part number specified in the schematic parts. It also includes parts whose MPM specified is not found by Source Engine. Unique parts are the unique internal or company components in the design. MPN indicates the components count which have manufacturer's part number defined and these can be found in the Source Engine's database. No NPN indicates component counts which do not have any NPN defined. EOL, as the name indicates, are components with lifecycle status as end of life. Not ROHS are the number of parts without ROHS or restriction of hazardous substances compliance. Risk and high risk score indicates the design risk score. Design Risk Sort utilizes supply data, lead times, and product life cycle to calculate a risk score from low to high. The risk tile shows the number of parts that are at medium, high risk, and may not be widely available or have decent lead times. The life cycle of those should probably be reviewed. High risk, the number of parts that are at high risk, may not be available. Lead times are trending higher, and life cycles may be inactive, obsolete, or not applicable. Obsolete are the number of parts within the life cycle status that are at discontinued. Below it, we have the bomb health score, which displays the overall health of the bomb as a grade. The grading takes into account the environmental risk life cycle, multi-source availability and inventory risk status of the part for the calculation. Adjacent to this, we have the graphical pie charts of bomb which displays the statistical data for availability of the components or availability forecast. A higher score indicates better availability and better lead times. The overall design risk distribution chart is the evaluation of lead times based on supply data and product life cycle. And the life cycle distribution chart, which displays life cycle status of parts in the bomb. To get a quick overview of the list of part numbers which are at higher risk, EOL, and at higher inventory risk, LiveBomb displays these in a consolidated list in the bottom section. Now, to view LiveBomb components in a list, click on the List View icon in the toolbar menu at the top. This will list all of the components in the bomb. If needed, we can click the header cell to sort the data and organize the bomb list. 
For each component row, users will see that the part details and the real-time supply chain details are fetched from Source Engine. These details include compliance lifecycle, status and market availability, score, design risk, and price. Now we'll select component row to view its additional details. On the right hand side, we will see the properties tab, which will give detailed information of the manufacturer part numbers. These details include the general section with general details of the NPN. The supply risk section shows the design risk and market availability score. A high score indicates this part is available from multiple vendors with quick lead times. Below it, we have the pricing data, which can be viewed for 30 to 90 days time frame using the dropdown. The supply risk section also shows the lead times for each manufacturer part number. This is followed by the inventory section, which displays the number and type of vendors who has stock of these parts. It also shows the inventory stock chart over weekly intervals. And last, we have the property section, which displays the key attributes and property-like device ratings. In addition to the property section, LiveBomb also shows the alternate MPNs for the selected component row in the bottom panel. Here, all the alternates available have all their supply chain details displayed in their respective row. The last column indicates the alternate compatibility type to the existing selected MPN. The pie chart on the left indicates the distribution of the life cycle of available alternates and indicates the active alternate MPNs in percentage format if needed. Users can also use the search table to search for alternate MPNs by typing the NPN in the search field. This search field on selection will get preceded by the value of the part number to search the NPNs. These tiles that we talked about earlier can be used to filter out specific part groups. Here we will click on the high risk tile to filter out the components which are at higher design risk. If multiple tiles are selected, then this will filter out results of the combined groups. So if we also click the Not ROHS tile, this will filter out all the components which are at high risk and are not ROHS compliant. Now select the filtered component row to view its details and alternate part information. From the list of alternates displayed, Let's select an alternate MPN. Once we select the alternate, the details in the right section will get refreshed for the alternate NPN selected. This alternate has better market availability and with less risk and is also ROHS compliant. Now click the plus icon to replace the NPN. Once done, the part count from high risk and the not ROHS tiles gets reduced. Similarly, filter out the obsolete components and replace it with an NPN that is active status. Now we'll switch to the unmatched tile and select a component row. Since there is no MPN defined for this part, LiveBomb automatically opens the search bar and populates the value of the component in it and displays the result. We can then select a component row for the results and view its information. Then click the plus icon to associate MPN to the part number. Similarly, we will complete the MPN and association for the other component. With all these updates done, we have optimized the BOM data using LiveBOM interface. We'll now update the design with the optimized BOM.
To do so, click the icon update schematic and select the R6 row, right click and select cross probe. This will cross probe from live bomb to the schematic and will open the schematic with the corresponding component selected. We will open the property sheet for the R6 component and we will see the SKU, MPN, manufacturer have been annotated for this part. Similarly, all the details have been associated and will get pushed to the design. Now click save to save the updates. With these changes done, we'll switch back to the live bar view and click refresh. Notice the updated timestamp based on the design. Now save. Now go to the dashboard view by clicking the dashboard icon. You'll notice that the bomb health grade has significantly improved. Earlier it was a D. Now with bomb optimization has been upgraded to an A. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time.